All right, welcome back to the shop. So in this video, I'm going to go over charging uh, this brake accumulator. This is a brake accumulator for a CAT 735. Um, it's about the same thing as for 725, 730, 740. Uh, plus a lot of other equipment does use like a screw-on capsule kind of uh, accumulator on stuff. Um, these are disposable. When they go bad, they're, they're no good. You can't rebuild these. Some of my rock trucks, a couple of my 740s have like, you know, just the standard type of accumulator that you could that you would normally see that looks, I mean, it looks almost like a hydraulic cylinder, basically. It's got a piston that floats in it. It's got a packing just like inside there. But um, um, those are for the cold weather package. So the ones I, those two, they came from the uh, Canada. So they came from up north with the cold weather package. So they have a different type of accumulator because in a real cold weather, these ones aren't sufficient, I guess. But anyways, we're just going to go over how to charge these ones. I printed up the, the specs from CAT. Um, this is the one here, the 1743199, this accumulator I'm working on. And it shows that the brake, that the charge pressure for the nitrogen should be 820 PSI plus or minus 22. You can see it shows 735, 740. Um, it shows 1 through 450 on the 735s. Because I think they went to one that's a little bit longer um, on the later ones and on the later 740s. Um, yeah, in fact, you can see right here is the number. So that'd be the longer accumulator there. Uh, it's going to hold the same pressure, though. So anyways, we're going to go over that real quick. We'll go over some safety about it and stuff like that, too. Um, don't take my word for it how to do this. If you aren't um, competent and trained in using nitrogen, using real high, high pressure stuff like this, don't even try it. Uh, but if you know, you're a heavy-duty mechanic, uh, repairman, and you are used to charging accumulators and stuff like that, then then this should help you guys out. At least it'll give you show you how I do it. But don't do it the way I do it. Do it the way Cat says, or do it the way that you're trained to do it. I don't want to be liable for you guys because this stuff can hurt you really, really bad. Um, th this tank here, I don't know how much PSI is in there. Um, I don't even know. I just got this one refilled. Um, it's really high high pressure stuff because um, we're going to be charging up to 820 that's nothing uh, but some of the stuff i do with my charge kit you know we charge up to 2000 psi on some stuff um so anyways here's my kit um here is the gauge that i use for this let's go over this this is my normal gauge that i put on when we're when we're filling normal accumulators you know when we're using a schrader valves for this this has the special uh adapter here that i use to make a high dac i don't know the part number or anything on it uh, but there's a couple different versions of this you could buy. You just have to buy the right version. And on mine, I don't run it into uh, my gauges. I just put an adapter on here and run it straight off my bottle. And what I do is, um, once I have it all hooked up, and we'll go over this one when, when I do it, I just crack open my valve here to flow the, to flow the gas and then shut it off. And the whole time I'm watching the gauge. And then that's all I need to do. So I really don't need regulators on it. It's... It's not like it's a big accumulator where it takes some time to fill it, where you open it up and you, you know, you're going to set your delivery gauge at the pressure you want and stuff like that. Um, with this one here, we're just feeding the nitrogen into it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this accumulator in my vise. Um, I'm going to take the bottom plug out. There's this yellow plug, and this is the oil side here. This is the side that the oil is going to flow in and out of. I take this plug out just so that it doesn't stay in there and cause the piston inside or the, the diaphragm inside from flowing all the way down. Because if this thing empty, it's going to level out. They do come with a few pounds in them, and um, you do need to purge. I, I always purge out what's in there. I'm sure they do put nitrogen in them when they build them, just because nitrogen's dry. It's not going to have any moisture, so it can't rust. You know, can't bring moisture into rusty inside. But even so, I take this out so this thing can free float without building pressure on the oil side of the, of the diaphragm. And then um, I'll clamp it in the vise. I'm just going to clamp it here to hold this. And then, uh, then I'll hook up the, the uh, gauge to it. All right, so I've got it clamped in the vise. And I make sure that I get it clamped just on the hex here, on this uh, port here for the oil. Because um, I've had them where I've, they've dropped. I just set it on the vise and I tighten it. And then it'll clamp down on this weld. And then it's going to come loose on you. And the last thing you want is for this thing to fall when you have the gauge and the hose is hooked to here. Because if that breaks off and this thing's full of pressure, this thing's going to become a rocket ship. And the same goes for this tank here. Um, if you break the valve off of this thing, this thing's going to go through the side of my shop, through the wall, and uh, it's going to land somewhere somewhere out in the field, way out there. All right, so to start with, I'll get the camera in here. You see there's an Allen plug in here, and this seals this off. Um, when you go to mount this valve on here, you, 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 this, this nut here, you turn that and you tighten it up, 
and then you know that tightens it up and seals it onto the accumulator and then this t-handle turns this allen screw here well the first time i used this i broke this off because this thing these uh, plugs can be really tight and this thing wasn't strong enough to handle me trying to loosen it i just got a pair of pliers on there and cranked on it and it twisted this right off so i had to replace that so i always take and loosen it first with the allen wrench and then i go ahead and mount this on and when i mount this on you'll see that, that allen wrench built in there has to engage into that plug and then you can just screw this on and then get it you know get the gauge pointed where you want it sorry about the camera angle here and then tighten it up and that'll seal it and then what we do is you just turn this uh back this off and this will back the plug off so let me go ahead and hook up the uh the, the airline here to the tank and then i'll show you guys what, what i do next okay so i took the cap off screwing this in remember if it's a flammable liquid in these it's going to be a left hand thread if it's a non-flammable it's going to be a right hand thread um, don't think you got to be very leery about this make sure that you're using nitrogen because if you accidentally grab a uh, an oxygen bottle and you go to charge this this has oil in it it's going to have oil in there if you try to put compressed oxygen into this as soon as you crank this valve open and you introduce some oxygen in here this thing's going to explode it's going to be a bomb it's going to rip you into 50 pieces because oxygen compressed oxygen like that is is very flammable believe it or not you think it's oxygen it's just air it's not flammable but no it's very flammable and if there's one drop of oil in it it'll it'll, it'll explode um we had years ago we had a mechanic working for us and um somebody had taken an old set of uh uh, hoses from from an oxygen acetylene torch and they just threw them in a toolbox in this old uh, field or like a job site boom truck we had and oil had leaked in there over the time or whatever but some oil had gotten into the hoses and this guy came to work for us and he saw those hoses thought oh I'm going to add that to my truck and you know make a longer torch hose and um, somebody was out there told him not to do it I forget who this was 20 years ago Anyways, he went and hooked it up, and it, and it had oil in it. And as soon as he opened up his, his oxygen bottle, that hose exploded, and it blows up big time. And fortunately, it was just in a rubber hose. Most of it was in his toolbox. It was contained. But that can kill you. And if you put oxygen, if you go and try to put compressed oxygen in here, you're, you're going to die. This will explode. It will explode big time. So double check. Make sure it's nitrogen. Okay, so we're going to get this on here. We need an, an inch and eighth wrench. Uh, crescent wrench so one inch yeah crescent wrench I'll tighten this tight so she don't leak okay so now I have everything hooked up I'm, I'm hooked up and tightened here uh, this is connected on so now I'm gonna unscrew this this will unscrew the plug in the top that Allen plug that should be out and then you see the gauge came up a little bit because they do transport these with a little bit or you know when they build them they put a little bit of nitrogen in there just to keep the static air and like any moisture out of here because otherwise this thing will start rusting sitting there on the shelf so i want to open this bleed valve we're going to open it up and drain out what's in there two thousand years later okay so that's empty so let's close it and I'm going to just open this up, crack it open and just put a little bit of nitrogen in there. And then I'm going to open this purge valve again and I'm going to let that purge out. I'm going to do that two or three times just to make sure that there wasn't any static air or whatever left in this accumulator. I want to make sure that it's pure dry nitrogen because that's, that's what I'm putting in it. So just crack it and close it and then it's just a little bit in there. That's enough to fill the chamber up and push the diaphragm down. And then when I open that up, the diaphragm's pushing it all back out. All right, so now let's close the, the bleed valve. We'll go back and double check. 822 plus or minus 22 PSI. So we're gonna shoot for like 830, 840. So we're gonna crack this open. And we're gonna watch the gauge. You can see a thousands right there. There's 500. So we're gonna get, keep filling it up. Open the gauge, the bottle. Gonna open the bottle a little bit more just to Increase the flow. Stop it right there. So that's 500, 650, 800, 5, let's see, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, so I'm just above 800 right now. 
Um, and I want to go 822, like 840. So we're going to go a little bit more. I'm going to let that settle. There we go. Um, so I've got the bottle shut off now. This bleeder's closed. It's holding pressure right about 840, 850. And then now I'm just going to crank this back in. And it's going to screw that Allen plug back in. And that's going to seal the bottle off. There we go. And then you just have to open that bleeder. That'll empty the line out here. And I can just pull this off, put the cap back on the bottle, and remove this stuff. In fact, let me do this right now. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And then I'm going to get that Allen wrench um, right here that I keep in my kit. And I'm going to tighten it, <clears throat> snug it down really good. Put the cap back on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my paint pen. I'm going to label that this one is full. It's going to be at uh, 840 PSI. And then that way I put it on the shelf. I know it's full. I know it's ready to go. All right, so that's it. Uh, make sure you use all safety precautions. Once again, if you aren't familiar with this kind of stuff and you don't do this stuff, make sure you get trained how to do it. Don't do it. Don't follow what I'm doing or saying on how to do it. Don't consider this training. I'm just showing you how I do this. And if you are familiar with doing nitrogen charging and all that, then this should be able to help you out. It's going to give you the pressure for these and just kind of they're pretty simple to do they really are so this just kind of gives you that gives you an idea of how i do it um one thing is you want to make sure you say eye, eye eye protection you always want eye protection on um you the bottle that you're using right here when you have the cap off this thing should be secured to something you should have a chain to a post a uh, chain to a vice or something like that so it doesn't fall over um, if this thing falls over and this valve breaks off, this thing's going to go for a ride. It's going to be a literal rocket. So make sure you use all the safety precautions. And uh, this video is just for uh, entertainment purposes only. And I thank you guys for watching. Uh, please hit the like button, uh, share with somebody, and uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. So thank you for watching.